Hey, welcome back. My name is Drew, and in this video, we are going to do a little bit of color in GeoGebra. When I was a kid, there was this thing called rainbow scratch paper. It was this uh, craft paper that was completely black, and it came with this wooden dowel thing that you could use to like scratch away the black surface, and it would reveal like a rainbow print underneath. So you could use it to create all these really cool, very colorful pictures. Anyways, today we're gonna make our own rainbow scratch paper in GeoGebra. I'm gonna show you a setting that we can do for any object in GeoGebra called dynamic color. It's really cool. It gives you the opportunity to make a lot of really neat looking, colorful, maybe mathematical art in GeoGebra. All right, here we go. Okay, here we are in the GeoGebra 2D calculator. The first thing we're gonna do is create a point whose coordinates are slider variables. So I'm gonna type in P equals the point A comma B. And when I hit enter, It'll make two sliders for us, one for A and one for B. Now, if you're new to sliders in GeoGebra, I made a video recently. You can go check it out. It'll tell you all about them. The key thing for us is that since we have a point whose coordinates are both slider variables, we can use our mouse to pick up and drag this point around. So this point is gonna be the tip of our pen as we're drawing on our scratch paper. The way we'll make it work is by making it so that this point leaves a trail as it moves. So we'll right click the point and go to settings, or you could go over here in the input bar, click these three dots, open up the settings. I almost always wanna get rid of the label so it's not showing the letter P next to the point. And the key thing here is to click show trace. So with the show trace option enabled, as we drag this point around, it leaves a trail. Great, notice that our, uh, our trail sort of snapped to the grid points wherever it could. So we don't actually want this grid here. So we're gonna go to the cog up in the top right, just click show grid and no grid. And I'll, while we're at it, let's get rid of the axes too. So we just have a blank canvas. So what we're gonna do now is make the point change color as it moves. The way we'll do that is by making it so that every time it moves, it updates its color based on where it is. So we're gonna go back to the settings for our point, go to the advanced tab, and then find the dynamic colors menu here. For our purposes for this, we're going to click this RGB drop down here and go to HSL, which is short for hue, saturation, and lightness. I'm definitely not the person who would be able to give you like a full overview of what hue, saturation, and lightness are as far as computer colors go. But in short, hue is the actual color, you know, like purple, blue, green, red, those are all different hues. The saturation is how intense the color is, like, you know, going from like a pale pink to deep pink is an increase in saturation. And the lightness is how bright or dark the color is. One of the key things though to keep in mind through all of this is that all three of these numbers need to be between zero and one. So we're gonna set the saturation to be one. We're gonna set the lightness to be 0 0.5. If you understand more about what these things are, you could change this to get a different look for your art. The hue is where we're gonna really do the dynamic part of this. What we're gonna put here isn't just a number, we're gonna put an expression instead involving the x and y coordinates of our point P. The x and y coordinates are called A and B, so actually any formula of A and B that you put in here will result in sort of a different pattern of color underneath your image. I'm gonna put in A plus B minus five divided by 10. This is something that in testing I found worked pretty well, but you should definitely try to experiment here and see what you can come up with. This is actually a place where understanding the math of like the, this function of A and B could lead you to, you know, create a little bit more interesting looking picture. And if you want something to start off with, in the corner of the screen right now, I put a couple extra suggestions for you for uh, other functions of A and B that you could put here to get slightly different looks to your picture. Anyways, after entering this in, I'm gonna click outside here and then click this X. And now we can come over to our point and click and drag it. And as we do, its color changes and it leaves a really nice rainbow trail for us. So there's a couple limitations here. The biggest one is definitely that if you were to click the background, so in other words, clicking somewhere that is not your point, and dragging as if you were trying to pan the view, as you can just see, it erases everything. It's something to do with how GeoGebra's show trace functionality works. It's kind of a bummer. Just make sure that you're always clicking the point and not the background before you drag to make something. 
Another sort of issue is that it's hard to like pick up the pen and move it to somewhere else. Like if I wanted to start a new line over on the right, I'd have to pick this up and move it real quick and then start dragging it again to draw something else. And you can see it sort of leaves a trail here. Again, that's just kind of how it works, but there's actually something we can do about this. The first thing I'm gonna do actually is change the background color. So I'll go to the cog in the top right again, go to settings, and then I'll scroll down to where I find background color. And uh, you can pick, you know, whatever color you want here. Maybe black would make the most sense, but I like dark gray a little bit better. So we'll click that and hit okay. But now you can see that as we draw, the rainbow is a lot, it's a lot easier to see. It's a lot higher contrast, so that's nice. And for the very last thing, let's make an eraser. So an eraser is going to actually going to be another point that we've made with show trace enabled. So let's go back to our input bar and make a new point called Q, give it coordinates C and D. We hit enter, it'll make a new point for us called Q. And for this point Q, let's go to its settings. We're gonna turn show trace on so that it leaves a trail behind it. And we're gonna turn off its label and let's go to its color over here and make it the same color as whatever we set for our background. So I picked this second to most darkest gray, so I'll click that there. And very last thing, let's go to the style and make this point as big as it can go. And now our point is right here. It might be a little bit hard to see because it has a black outline, but when we click it and drag it around, the trail that it leaves behind it is the same color as the background, and so it acts in a, as an eraser. So there you go, that kind of gets around the issue of the fact that you can't really pick up your pen. So yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, I'm interested to see if you can come up with anything cool here. It takes a little bit of patience and a lot of, you know, careful drawing with either your mouse or your trackpad, but I think it could be really fun. All right, so that's it for this one. I hope you found it fun. Definitely go try it out if it's something that looks cool to you. And if you're into doing things with GeoGebra, try working in this dynamic color setting into whatever you make next. I feel like anything where you're using a slider to change something about an object, either its location or its size, like consider making it like a different color. For one thing, it'll just make your mathematical visualizations look a lot cooler, but I feel like you could also use it to convey extra information that a normal animation would not be able to. And as always, if you have any questions or if there's something in GeoGebra you wanna learn more about, Leave me a comment down below and I'll check it out. Go ahead and give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more fun math content. Thanks for playing along and I'll see you in the next video.